typical Colorado weather for you. It was nice and sunny out a couple days ago. Now it's really cold and snowing. And it's also the middle of May. But it's the usual. When it's about to be summer, but you live in Colorado. Just a blizzard outside. So since the weather's so shit, we came to this uh, local indoor skate park with our buddy Chase, rides a skateboard, and with Nick again. So it's a pretty small little skate park, but it's really fun. And right now we're just in the upper level right now. They got the foam pit and the resi over there. So this is where we come to learn backflips and stuff. Nick's gonna send a flip to resi, hopefully first try. No foam pit today, so he can take it to the park. You gonna do it right now? Just send it. Aw, oh, what a pussy. What a bitch. <laughs> what a bitch, had to go to foam again. <laughs> Yo, finally. Grab my scooter. I got that on film. No. You want to take it down? Yeah, go for it. Then just rock it. <laughs> oh my god. Dude, that was so sick. Never done that before. I've never seen that at all. That's the best bail I've ever seen here. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Let me try your bike. <laughs> nice. That was sick. <laughs> Everything hurts. Ankles. Fuck bikes. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was that bad. I'll try it again. Do it. Send it to Resi.
See you guys. It was fun. Peace out. Later. Got some things to open real quick. Let's see. Oh, this is some uh, heat transfer paper for making shirts. These should be car parts right here. Cut through the sticker a little bit. It'll be all right. So I got a, another oil pressure uh, sending unit for a wagon when I start on that because I broke the old one for the oil pressure gauge. And I also got adapters for that sending unit. So when you guys saw me put the oil pressure gauge on the hatch, I just threaded uh, this guy right into the block and that is not correct. This is uh, MPT fitting right here and the Hondas have like a B something MPT. So I got a little adapter, so I'm gonna do it right this time and not just straight thread it into the block. Even though it is really close and it doesn't leak anyway, you should use an adapter. So got those. Then lastly, this is gonna be for the Wago as well. This is a, a black box delete plug. There's a little EVAP box on the back of the D16 block and you just pull that guy out and then this hammers in and just plugs it off and then you just have to run a catch can setup and makes a lot more room back there. I'm mainly doing it so I can fit this uh, new pressure sensor once I get that all put together. So I should have the parts for my wagon, hopefully soon. This has got to be the gayest thing I've ever seen. This is hard. Yeah. Make a nice pillow. Ow. All right, good. The fucking you left the fucking lights on. Some <laughs> <laughs> batteries charged. Gonna, oh, gonna drive, take a test drive in my brand new car that I just got from Killian. <laughs> so it, it blew a head gasket. He didn't want to fix it, so I came down there and fixed the head gasket, and now I'm buying it off of him. It was super fucking easy. <laughs> it took like us eight bolts and two hoses. It was a thirteen dollar eBay kit custom door Damn, dude, this thing is nice look at that nice. semi stripped but it's all Save you some work it does it come with a sick ass vice grip window roll down yeah racing steering wheel racing seats auxiliary usb ports yep the keys in the center Smells like cigarettes. You taste like cigarettes. There's a car coming, so. What in the fuck Children is that? Goddamn screaming little girls. We gotta go take it off that sick jump at Wyatt's. Yeah, we'll, we'll take it off some jumps. So I'm driving my hatch right now. I got the alternator changed out. I used the one that I had off the other H22 in the shed. And I'm just letting her warm up right now. And I'm gonna see if my battery light still comes on because before, with the other alternator, it would start to drop voltage about 5,000 RPM and up. And if I would rev it up past that, even in neutral, the battery light would flash at me. So I'm just letting her warm up before I try to rev it at all and see if that that helped at all. Actually I can probably rev it right now. She's pretty she's pretty warm, so no battery light so far, so that seems pretty good. In second gear right now, just gonna slowly bring her up over 5,000. Don't mind that SRS airbag light, that's always on. See if that battery light comes on again. No battery light, so 
I'm really hoping that means the alternator that I just put in there is working better than the old one. I don't have my laptop with me to watch the uh, voltage on the Honda data, but I'm guessing that definitely helped because no matter what I did on that old alternator, uh, that battery light would definitely come on at anything over 5,000 every time. And this one already seems to be working way better. So hopefully she's getting enough voltage so I don't run out of fuel next time I put it on the dyno. Literally right as I was coming back after I filmed me driving around in the hatch and saying that the alternator was all good, everything just started to dim out and die. The battery light came on and just all of a sudden the alternator stopped working or something stupid. So I just kind of gave up, went to AutoZone real quick, bought a brand new alternator. And what's weird is when I came back, the battery had been so weak that it couldn't start the car before I went to AutoZone. And I just parked it here, left it, and it only had like maybe 10 volts at most. I had my voltmeter hooked up to it. Went to AutoZone, got a new alternator, came back, and then I left the voltmeter plugged into it. And then it said it had almost 12 volts again, just sitting there. And the car started again, even though it wouldn't start before, and I did not touch the battery at all. And then I went to drive it around, and it seemed like it was charging fine on that uh, alternator I pulled out of the shed, but the battery light would just start to come on again. So I didn't know what was going on with that. That was kind of weird. But I just gave in, bought a new alternator, brand new alternator, already put it in. I've already driven it around, and it seems to be charging great. And this time there is no more battery light at all. So if it does happen to mess up again, I will know that it's something in the wiring because I have a brand new alternator now. So something could be grounding out, but it seems fine. I just drove it around for like 10, 15 minutes. She's charging good, no more battery light, revved it up as much as I want. So hopefully that's all it needed. And once I get a new wideband sensor, because this one went out, she will be ready to go back on the dyno. But guys, that is gonna be it for tonight. I'm just really glad that the hatch is up and running again. I'm sure that alternator will work just fine. It's a brand new one, so there shouldn't be any problems there. And yeah, Charlie also got a new Geo, generously donated from Killian. So that'll probably be like his new little daily now while his green one is under maintenance. Not sure where he's at on that. He still has to get some work done on that to get the motor in. I think he's gonna be taking it up to PFI here pretty soon to get like a tube chassis front end put into that but uh, I also want to talk about the Odyssey but I'll save that for another video I do have some new plans for the van and I'll get into that in another video but anyways that's gonna be it for tonight guys so thanks for watching and also I'm just now getting used to these braces they fucking suck